Hi, in this video I'll show you how to use Open Sprinkler to control these off-the-shelf remote power sockets so that you can not only use Open Sprinkler for sprinkler valves but also use it to switch power line devices such as Christmas lights, heaters, fans and other devices that can be directly plugged into these power sockets. Support for this feature has been added to Open Sprinkler firmware 2.1.1. Using this feature requires a small amount of modifications, which can be done within 15 to 20 minutes. To begin, you will need an Open Sprinkler 2.0 or above, one or more remote power sockets. These power sockets typically come with a remote control. It's highly recommended that you use remote controls that have separate on and off buttons. In addition, you need a pair of 433 MHz Trans transmitter and receiver, and the RF toy to help decode the signals sent to the remote power sockets. These components are all available for purchase at the Race Hobby Shop by following the link below. Step 1 is to test the signal decoding of the remote power sockets. First, take out the 433 MHz transmitter and solder a wire antenna. To do so, Cut a piece of wire, roughly 17 centimeters or 6.7 uh, inches long. Strip one end of the wire and solder it to the antenna pinhole on the transmitter. Next, take out the RF toy and insert the RF receiver to the pin header here. Make sure that the VCC and ground pins on the receiver match the 5 volt and ground pins on the RF toy. Now insert a mini USB cable to power it up. Use buttons S1 or S3 to select the empty slot and S2 to enter the slot. Then press and hold the button S3 to start recording. At this time press any on button on your remote and the RF toy will sniff the signal sent to the remote power socket and convert it to a hexadecimal code. Repeat the same process to record the off signal this time by pressing and holding button S1 to start recording and then press the off button on the remote control. So your remote may come with more than one pairs of on and off buttons. Um, so just make sure you record one matched pair at a time. Once the signal is decoded, you should see a hexadecimal code of 16 characters long. The first six characters encode the on signal, the next six encode the off signal, and the last four encode the signal timing. You can then go back and select a different slot and record a different pair of on and off code. Now unplug the receiver and plug in the transmitter to this set of three pin headers and make sure that the uh, data and ground pins match the data and ground pins on the pin header here. So in this case you may have to bend the pins and then the transmitter will basically face down and then you can plug it into the RF toy like this. Now click buttons S1 or S3 and you should see that the remote power socket is being turned on or off just like when you press the uh, buttons on the remote control. So this means with the code we can now simulate the remote control and uh, directly talk to the power socket in software. Okay, let's proceed to step two. Here we'll remove the open sprinkler enclosure
depending on the version of your open sprinkler, the pinouts may be close to the top of the circuit board here, or close to the Ethernet jack if it's a DIY kit. Remember that the transmitter has three pins, data, VCC, and ground, and the pinouts on open sprinkler is designed to match this order. Insert the transmitter to the circuit board and making sure that the data VCC and ground pins match the A3 VIN and ground pins on the, on the open sprinkler. Then solder the pins at the back and clip the pins as necessary. Finally, carefully arrange the wire antenna around the LCD so that the whole assembly can fit back into the enclosure. And that's it. Step 3 is to do final testing. First, make sure that your open sprinkler is running firmware 2.1.1 or above. You can check the firmware in the web interface. Just go to the About page, and then that should show the, your current firmware version. If your open sprinkler is running a version earlier than 2.1.1, you can follow the instructions online to update your firmware. Next, go to the Edit Stations page. Select a station which you would like to use as a radio frequency station and change its name to the 16 character code that you saw on the RF toy. Then submit the change. The firmware will automatically check the station name and detect if it's a RF station. If so, when the station is turned on, the controller will send out the signal through the transmitter to turn on the corresponding remote power socket and vice versa when you turn off the station. So basically we're using the station name to store the remote signal code and this way Open Sprinkler can switch on or off remote devices. To summarize, we soldered an RF transmitter to Open Sprinkler and used an RF toy with RF receiver to decode the signals sent to the remote power sockets. Using the signal code as a station name, the open sprinkler can simulate the remote and switch the corresponding power socket. Keep in mind that you most likely want to turn off the sequential flag for the RF stations, because unlike the sprinkler stations, you probably don't want the RF stations to be serialized. Also, if you are short of stations, you can simply increase the number of expansion board, even if you don't have that many expansion boards physically. Because Open Sprinkler can support up to 48 stations, uh, you can use one Open Sprinkler to talk to many different power sockets. So this is really a convenient and low-cost way to add more general purpose home automation control to Open Sprinkler. That's all for this video. For additional details, please visit www.opensprinkler.com. Thanks for watching this video.